Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here today with, well, you already know. <laughs> this video is for my friend Kathleen who left me a comment on Facebook, on my personal Facebook page that please, please, please do a video. Um, I thought you guys were sick of seeing this stuff, but I had a request so I'm going to do this. And yes, there's shadows. I'm sorry. We have a very overcast day today and I think it might, might rain. Okay, so this is what she saw, is this, let me bring you in closer. I carved this in December carve in 2000 and I think 17. And it was a gnome that I saw, well a gnome slash Santa Claus looking guy that I saw on Pinterest and I tried to make him not exactly like the one on Pinterest, but, you know, in that same vein. And then I decide, well, if I can use a stencil, freehand, anything like that to make a uh, metal embossing, why not stamp a stamp onto the metal and go around the stamp? So I like to give my family a little gift or family and friends, close friends, a little gift in a Christmas card or a handmade card. So this year I'm thinking I might do metal embossed Christmas ornaments. So this is one, one that I'm trying out that I made from stamps during December carve. So here's the stamp and here is, I think this one is my first attempt. Oh, you can't get them all. I can't get them all in there. Hang on. There you go. This is because he's cut out roughly on the sides. There's my first guy. And then, now I've only done two of these, so here's A and B. And B looks a little different than A because I put little hash marks in his hat. And I think if I make a ne the next one, I'm not going to put the hash marks because I kind of like it better without them. The only thing that needs to be a hash mark looking stuff is his little whiskers. So I think maybe this one will be a one of a kind and I will not make another one that looks like this because I'm not sure I like the hash marks in his hat. All right, so I'm going to fast forward through this process because really and truly there's not a lot of talking that needs to go on during this. And then when I finished, I'll show you the, you know, a closer up, up closer look of the third one of these that I'm doing. Um, so let's get started. Okay, I changed my mind. <laughs> so let me explain to you about the tw about what I need. I ordered a while ago. I ordered these um, tinned copper pieces, and there are twelve. There were twelve five by five squares. So this one has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces left. And I ordered two of these. So I've already gone through 12 of the others. And then I've gone through five of these and now this one. So I don't want to waste any of this stuff because when I ordered it, it was $4 and it was a little less than five dollars when I ordered it, and I got free shipping. Now the price has tripled to twelve something with free shipping. So I suggest if you're going to do this, buy a roll of I think this is thirty-six gauge tinned copper. Buy a roll of something. Don't let somebody cut out the pieces for you. It it may seem like it's more expensive up front, but in the long run, you will be happier if you cut your own sizes. That way, you will minimize the waste because you know the stuff was not cheap. All right, so I'm going to be using one sheet of this. And my guillotine cutter. Hang on. Since I cannot cut a straight line to save my life, even if I use a ruler, <laughs> I decided to use the guillotine for this. So um, this is five inch square, so I'm going to do it at two and a half. I hope that's right. Here we go. Two and a half. All right. So here's two, two and a half by five pieces. Then I'm going to take my mats that you've seen in previous videos. It's just the um, fun foam 
that you get a you know a nice thick package from Hobby Lobby or Michaels wherever your choice is and then I took two pieces and took the sticky paper off the back and put them back to back so they stick to each other and then I had this extra one that I found I thought well what the hey might as well throw that into the mix too so I got that all right so I would like to see the copper portion although you can do either side of this it doesn't really matter so I'm going to do the copper side here's my little guy right here my little gnome and I'm using stays on jet black ink because I have it. All right, because I want all the artwork mostly to be on this side, I'm going to stamp him on the back side. Let me move him out of the way, or this out of the way, because I don't want to make any extra indentations in my metal than what's necessary. All right, so what's going to happen is this is going to be a really juicy stamp because I just re-inked it. <laughs> Good timing, huh? And if I stand him up this way, he doesn't quite, I mean, it's very tight, so I'm going to tilt him a bit so that he tilts in the area. And yes, I will cut off the extras like I did with the other ones that I made. I have extra pieces, and I will save those to do something small and add them on to another piece at a later time. So I want to make sure that this guy, the impression from the stamp is really good. And I'm going to peel him up this way. Now I don't care that there's this mess in here because that's not going to matter. Alright, so my favorite tools to use for this are the paper stumps. Stubs, stumps, whatever you want to call them. And then the um, Walnut Hollow tool that I bought that I never could get the right company name. So it is Walnut Hollow. <laughs> so I've never been formally trained doing this. I just watched a ton of videos and have been following what I've seen other people do. And I'm not sure if there's a right or a wrong, but I'm going to show you what I do. And if it's wrong, I'm on my own. All right, so I want the embossed part to be here. So I want this to be cushiony so it goes well. And I'm going to start at the top of his hat. I'm just going to outline the black parts and then you notice there's the silver in between and I'm just gonna go down the hat and kinda go in with the indentation of the black I'm going to turn it and try my best to outline the hat just like it shows for this in the stamp and the black and blackened areas in the stamp and you just kind of have to make up the parts that aren't black. There you go. All right, so this is what I've got on the other side. There's this little hat. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this it's the Teflon tip sometimes they come unscrewed a little bit from how I'm tough on tools all right so then we made this little line here already and then we have the outline so I'm just going to go back through and outline the dark so it separates it from the empty silver spots so he looks like he has a striped hat on It takes a little bit of concentration to do this just because you don't want to, you know, have an accident and go outside the line and get a little crazy with it. Although, you can if that's your preference. You can add lib and then you can, if you don't like it, which happened to me the other day, I did something on a piece of metal I didn't like it and I took this and rubbed it out as much as I could to cover up the mistake. Well, not mistake. I just didn't like the way it looked. All right, so now it's starting to buckle. So you have to be really careful and kind of convince it or coax it into making a line. Sometimes it will fight back. It doesn't want to do it. And now I've got a line that's messed up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the paper stump 
and I'm going to coax it out. There we go. Then I'm going to take this and try that line again. Try to make it make it try to make it a more smooth transition between the dark and the light. Now I'm just going to keep going and tracing and tracing. Okay, let's we'll see what we got here. All right, so there's his little hat. With the glare with the light and the shiny metal, it's hard to There you go. It's hard not to have a glare on this. All right, so there's the hat. Now I want to do his little eyes and I want them to poke out onto the other side. So I'm just going to make a little mark there and a little mark there. And then he has this nice little fat nose and I'm going to go around the black. There we go. Now, I need to stop the whiskers somewhere because eventually I'm going to have to cut this with scissors. So I need a beginning and an ending point. S since this is already nicely trimmed around here, I'm just going to take the stylist and go around the end of the black from where the whiskers end and I'm just going to outline them gently and my hand is already smeared <laughs> because this is not quite dry actually it's still wet not even close to dry all right so I need the rest of his face to to be on there so I'm going to go up through here with that black where it was and just make that little line so that now you can see he has his little nose, his two little eyes, and this is where his beard goes. Okay? All right, so I know that I want the middle portion to be empty. I want this portion to stick up, to pop up. So I need to make a line delineating the nose from the rest of this here. So I'm going to go around with the stylus and trace where the stamp is, where the black. So I'm going to take the stylus and I'm going to kind of go around it where the black ink is and leave it alone. I'm done. So now the part that I need to do is to figure out what I want to stick up and what I don't want to stick up or to be embossed on one side and debossed on the other side. Because the ink is wet, the end of my stumps are going to turn black. Don't freak out. It'll be okay. I did the first time I was like, oh no, I ruined my stumps. No, it's all right. Okay, so since I think I might like, let me see, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down down. I want this one by his forehead to pop up like I did the others. So this is up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, every other one. So what I need to do is find the first one. And I don't want to start at the top and get to the bottom and go, oh. So in order for it to pop up on this side, I need to turn it over and it's this little black section right here that I need to do. And because it's kind of skinny, I'm going to use a smaller paper, a oh, smaller stump. I'm, I'm, oopsie. I'm going to try to stay in frame as best I can. All right, so this black portion, I want to pop up on the other side. So I'm just going to rub in the black area. Because I want the place over his brow to pop out because I think that separates the face from the hat. All right, so now we have a little pop-up area where his little face is. And I want to make sure that I stay in the lines as best I can for this part. Let me take a look. And the one thing about doing this is you need to flip over and look and flip over and look. All right, so now I know all the black parts are what I need to color in. So this black part right here will be colored in, I mean, pushed in. It will be embossed on the other side. And then just go along these parts where you've drawn the lines and stay within the lines. Now it's getting a little bigger. I go to a larger, 
paper stump and I just kind of press it in and this just kind of press it in and then this one and we're getting smaller again so I'm going to use this one again because it's a little bit smaller and yes the black ink is coming up on the stump but there was already black ink on it anyway. All right, now I'm going to do the tip of the hat, which I think is important. It pops up. I'm going to flip it over and look. And I pretty much have every other one. Some of them are not as clear as others. So I'm going to go back again and rub a little harder to make sure it is clearly defined because I'm going to have to take the tool, the stylist, and kind of go around these to make sure they pop up lovely. Now this is causing the metal to bow, but, and you have to be really careful with this because what will happen is you'll go smooth and all of a sudden you'll hit and then you have a hard time making the metal do what you want it to do. You have to convince it. So I'm going to just make a little line here and try to make, you know, little, little lines where the indentations are. So I'm going around the parts that are popped up so the parts that aren't indentated will actually cave in. Let's see, this part needs to cave in here along this. You could use the ball tool right here on the end of this one. There's a, ball, a very small ball tool if you want to go in between. I just want to make sure that there's a nice line, clear line in between to make it look like it's a striped hat. Because when you put the black on it, you want it to look like silver black, silver black, silver black, or whatever color you use. Just like this one. It's every other one. All right, so let's see how am I doing here. All right. I'm just kind of going to go around and up. And this one's going to need this because this one's kind of tight. Sometimes they don't want to go down. You have to convince them. Be gentle. Sweet talk it. Line. Down. Down. And they are eventually going to go down because you've worn down the others before it gives in. <laughs> All right, so I'm not liking how messy this is here, so I'm going to take my stylus and I'm going to go back over it one more time because it does look a bit sloppy. And I don't want it to look sloppy. I want it to look nice. Let's see how we get. Not, not quite what I was hoping for. So it's this area here that's a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rub rather smartly in there and it looks like a circle but I'm trying to get out the parts I don't like. So we have this right here that goes through here and I'm going to make another line to kind of follow the line above it and then I will go through and do indentating or debossing so I'm just going to start kind of slowly making it cave in. I don't want to just mash it because then everything caves in. So you just kind of go slowly and you push just very gently on it. And eventually it goes down. There we go. It takes some patience. And if you're not a patient person, this might not be a craft for you. <laughs> just saying. All right, let me see. Is this, this is all indentated here and this should be popped up. So I need a little more popping up over here. There we go. All right, now to clearly define it, I'm gonna go around the outside edge and just outline it again because now you've popped stuff up and things may have shifted. You want to make sure you define it. Some people use paper stump, the stumps for this. 
but I'm going to use the stylist. I've tried it several ways, and for this one, this works the best. And I'll show you why later. All right, so you see his little nose. I want his nose, whoops, I want his nose to stick out. So I'm going to take medium-sized stylist, and I'm going to rub inside that little circle there where his nose is. And I want it to pop up because it looks cute that way. See? Popped up. All right, so that his nose stays good. Gently go around here and kind of just kind of outline it a little bit. Don't press down too hard. And then I'm going to do it up here on the top so that you can tell where his nose is. All right, now, so I also want this to pop out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the big stump and I'm going to rub all along where the black is. Can you see that? There you go. And I'm going to go around it because I need to define where it is. But I don't want to mash where the bottom part of the nose is because that will cave the nose in. These are both, these will be at different depths. This will be deeper, this will be a little less deep, and this will be just slightly bowed. All right, so I'm going to go in there and now I'm going to clean it up. Kind of rub on it. And it stretches the metal. But like anything else, you can cause holes in it by causing, like I've said in videos in the past, metal fatigue because you just put too much stress on it. Now see how this pops up? His nose is really good. Now I want the rest of this to kind of pop up. So I'm going to take this one and I'm just going to go around it just a hair. Just kind of rub it a little bit. I don't want to cause a big difference between these two, but I want it to be just enough that when I put his whiskers on, it bows. So there is a distinct line around here in height. Just a little rubbing. Don't go crazy. Don't put a lot of pressure on it. See, this is where you can mess up is push down too much and then these two will be the same height. Then I don't really want that. And what's going to pop it, whoops, what's going to pop it up even more is when you put the whiskers on it. Okay. Okay. I want this to be as smooth as possible. But I've got a couple wrinkles in here, so just kind of work it out as best you can. All right, so now I've got, this is the highest, this is medium, and then this is really low. And you can see where I went through, but it won't matter. Let me buff it out a little bit with this one. All right, this is my favorite part. This is where doodling makes it easy. So in the original, this guy has a lot of whiskers. I've already made this pop up and this pop up, and now this is gonna pop up around here when I make the lines. All right, so I'm gonna start this way, and some of the whiskers go out like that. So I'm going to go along the line where the indentations were that I made earlier. And now I'm just making his little whiskers. And as you can see, whoops, focus camera, there are his whiskers starting. And I can see that I need to do a few more right up here. I need to define that face space there a little bit better. Okay, so now all I'm going to do is just put lots and lots of whiskers on my little gnome. 
and try to take them from where this is around here to the outside of here. And there is no pattern for this. You just put them wherever you like them best and flip it over and keep looking at them to see if they go all the way out to where you want them to go. I'm a little shy here, so I need to make them go up the edges down and then up because I'm too short along the edges. And they do not need to be perfect because his little beard is not perfect. And then you need to start transitioning around the corner and this is where sometimes you give it a little character. Keep putting lines in his little chin. All right, let's take a look. See, you can see that he has a little swirly here. I think he's probably good enough. Okay, so there are all his lines drawn in his face. And that's it. There really isn't a lot to do to this guy. So what I do now is I take a piece of paper and put it over this. You still need the, the um, fun phone under here. You probably need, this is a jewelry mat that's really felty. Put that under there, there. Take, I'm using spackling. I'm a spackle girl. Let me back this out so you can see better. There you go. Because I want all these places that I popped up to stay popped up, I need to fill them in. So that's what this is all about. Just taking spackle that you buy at the hardware store and kind of mush it in there like your butter and toast. And then it takes, I don't know, two or three hours to dry, depending on how deep the concave parts are. And since I have a lot of concave on here, he's, I'm going to do the whole back. Some, some things, if you only have like one little spot that's concave, you'd fill in that spot and the rest of it's empty. But I have a lot of that kind of stuff on here, so I have to basically cover the whole back. And since this is really deep, this is going to take a while to dry. I try to mash it in as best I can without ruining my stuff on the other side, but sometimes that's easier said than done. Because what's going to happen is I'm going to glue this when it's dry. I'm going to glue this onto the back of a um, piece of cardstock or some kind of previously used chipboard. Oops, chipboard. And let it dry. Let's see how we got here. Sometimes you get the spackle on the front, but really you can wash it off with a wet cloth whenever it dries, or you can pick it off in the beginning. And I like to pick it off that way. I don't have to remember to do it later. All right, so he's still puffed out. And he's done. I mean, it's just that easy. There's the spackle. It's wet. And it's going to need a few hours to dry. So I have shown these in a previous video that these are finished Christmas ornaments that were made from... Oh, I don't have the templates here. Oh, here's one. I show, Excuse me. I showed in the vid previous video that you just lay it on there and then trace around it, and then just let your imagination go crazy. I put a little bling on different places where I had made indentations in the top, and then I glued them on there. I did glue these on with E6000. I don't think tacky glue is going to hold them. I took the big bite that was so nicely provided to me by a friend, and I poked a hole in the tops, and there's the red cardstock, and then I will write to and from on the back in the year, and then there'll be a ribbon in it. Here's a green one I did. I, 
I use the enamel dots. I'm not as crazy about this as I am the blingy ones. Here's another one. Went a little crazy with the bling there. I'm not a blingy girl, but these scream bling. Here's one I did with pearls, and this one is very flat. It does not stick up like the other, so there's no spackle in this one. Then this one, I just totally lost my mind. <laughs> there is stuff all over the place on this one. But it'll look nice when the Christmas lights shine on it. And there's the red on the back of it. I think I did, did I do all these. Yeah, all these are done in red. Once the spackling is dried and you put the color on it and it's all finished, then I glued the bling onto it. I took them, whoops, there you go, there's a rip. Then I took them and um, I took E6000, put it on the spackling, and then laid the cardstock on it and then cut it out again. So there are some Christmas ornaments for that. These are two that are still in progress. I carved this again in December carved 2017 and it's of an angel. So I thought, well, let me try the angel. One I like, one I'm not so crazy about, but there are the little angels that were stamped on the thing. There's the spackle on the back. They're waiting to be glued onto uh, cardstock, and then I will cut them out. And then holes will be poked in here for the ribbon to go on them. I think I like the gnome Santa Claus ones the best. But you know, they were a lot of fun. These guys are still in process. There, there's a spackle. Okay, so that's it, Kathleen. There it is in a nutshell. All done. See you guys later. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. That would be lovely. And leave me a comment. Have any questions, please feel free to ask. I don't know if I have any answers, but I'll tell you my experience. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.